Call me in order. Please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> and tonight our invocation will be given by Bishop Brian Evans from the LDS Church, and yes, he is a Holly Springer. Is that correct? I think that's right. Welcome back, Brian. Our dear, kind Father in Heaven, we are yeah. uh, indeed grateful this evening uh, to meet uh, in our town hall meeting. We are so grateful for the many blessings that thou hast poured out upon us. We are grateful for our families. We are grateful for this country that we have to live in, for the rights and the freedoms that we enjoy. We are grateful for this town, for the community, and for the friends that we uh, have in this community. We are grateful for all those who provide wonderful service uh, to us in this community. We humbly ask that thy spirit will be upon our town leaders, that they will be able to be inspired to make decisions that will move our community forward that will be able to help those in need and help us grow uh, and continue to be a welcoming community. We ask for thy blessing upon those who are sick and needy, that they will be healed, that they will be able to feel thy spirit, and that we will be able to reach out and to help them and recognize their needs. We ask for a blessing upon the leaders of our country as well, that they will be able to make decisions uh, that will help move us forward and continue to protect our rights and freedoms. Uh, we are grateful for all that we have, and we ask for these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. By the way, to confirm um, what your kids think, on, <laughs> on Saturday at 9.15, the town is celebrating his birthday by the fireworks display at the Sug Farm. Tell him I said that, all right? Because I know you already did. Thank you. Item number four, adjustment approval of July 1st, 2014 meeting agenda, Linda Hunt Williams. Motion to adopt July 1st, 2004 meeting agenda with the following changes as written on the screen. Second. Motion to be made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, item number five, public comment period. We have uh, somebody named Leroy Smith. I think he's the chief of the fire department. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Nice to see you, chief. You have some nice, nice things to tell us, right? I'm sure. <laughs> Mr. Mayor and Council, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you real quickly. Um, on June 22nd, a fire destroyed the North River Volunteer Fire Department in Cataract County. Um, they completely lost all their equipment, all their apparatus. Their department has many immediate needs to serve and protect their community. So our department was preparing to surplus some of our older equipment today, and I was meeting with Mr. Simmons, and I was relaying him this message, and we kind of came up with the idea, well, if we're going to surplus this, maybe it would help their community and that department get back in service rather than the monetary gain that we would get from surplusing some equipment. So what I came tonight to ask you guys, if it would be possible for us to go ahead and donate that equipment to them immediately, we're talking about 14 sections a fire hose and probably 10 nozzles that we're probably never going to use again. We still have some spare stuff in case any of our equipment breaks. And then on the 14th or the 15th meeting, we'll go ahead and put a consent agenda in to surplus that equipment. But I felt it was important for their community to get that stuff to them as soon as possible. Um, and I just wanted to you know, follow up and tell you that our fire service, as you guys are aware, is founded on many principles and brotherhood is one of the most prominent. And by helping out another department, we're demonstrating that principle of community and brotherhood. And I appreciate Mr. Simmons' support and allowing me to come and speak to you tonight and ask for that. So I don't know if I need to do anything else. Do we need a, con a, a consent on that? Yeah, you can go ahead and direct them to do it pending the consent. surplus resolution. Yeah, make it so. Consent. Yeah, Done. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chief. At this point in time, we'll close the public hearing and go to agenda item 6A, consent agenda, Jimmy Cobb. Uh, motion to adopt the uh, consent agenda. Second. Motion be made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Agenda item 7A under new business, 06 MAS 08 A01 12 Oaks Phase 4. Laura Holloman, I won't say that you were late tonight. <laughs> Can I go say how many minutes she was late? No, I'm ready to go say that. Because <coughs> I'm a nice guy. Sure. Okay, the first item on new, under new business is for uh, 12 Oaks Phase 4. Um, on the location map, you can see 
This is where phase four is located. Uh, this is, of course, New Hill Road. This is the first entrance. So this is Green Oaks Parkway, and then this is uh, Ancient Oaks Drive, the second entrance here, so it'll uh, be off of that. Um, it was first approved back in 2006 and never uh, went anywhere after that. The lots were never platted and construction drawings were never approved or submitted. It originally consisted of 22 lots. Uh, the proposed amendment uh, tonight proposes 39 lots, so an additional 17 lots. And in doing so, they are transitioning uh, from a bigger lot size of a minimum lot size of 12,000 square feet down to a tight B lot, which is a minimum lot size of 7,000. However, um, and I apologize for the typo in your packet, the smallest lot is just over 8,000 square feet, and the largest lot here is just under 27,000 square feet. So it's a nice lot back there. <laughs> so... Um, with that said, they are um, the kind of the previous the previous uh, phase four was basically just a cul-de-sac straight down. And what they've done is they've added uh, nice central open space areas um, throughout uh, the street, so everyone can kind of have um, access to to green there. So the original plan called for 0.8 acres, they've increased that uh, to 1.8, so they've added an, an acre, an over an acre of, uh, excuse me, right an acre of open space, not, not including the surrounding golf course behind them, so that's internal open space there. Uh, they are planning to have uh, street trees as required, uh, and planning board did not have any issues with this amendment. Is that near the entrance? It is. Um, if you want to show us the entrance, yes, where it is, we'll yeah. Go back. This is the entrance here. Right. So this is uh, phase six, which was just approved earlier right. uh, this year, and then this will go back. This is, of course, the power line right. uh, easement. Um, but there'll be a, a few lots here, and then, of course, nothing under the power lines, and then it'll open up kind of back here towards. You can see these are the existing golf course greens. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments for Laura? No. Certainly better than a basic cul-de-sac. Cul yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, or um, I guess there are three potential places where people could turn around mm -hmm. with a basic cul-de-sac. It would you'd either have to drive all the end of the uh, end of the road mm -hmm. or turn around in a driveway. Yep. So, and I assume that on both sides of that park, it's two-way traffic. Both sides of the park is two-way. Like it. Is it one way or two-way? It's two -way? one way. Yeah. One way. One way. Mm -hmm. No way to the right. But they can still turn around three different places. Yeah, so. that's right. right. Yeah. Go, go back. Got yeah. some midway points. And, and Other plan, questions or comments? And the planning board had no no issues, no discussion. Did not have whatsoever. any issues. Six oh two. Okay. I mean, they voted six oh two, but yeah, yeah. you, you never know. Yeah. Good question. Other questions or comments? Nope. Nothing. Nope. Wrong. All right. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Let's go to it. There you go. Who wants to tackle it? Motion to approve preliminary plan 06 MAS 08 A01 for 12 Oaks Phase 4 as submitted by Spalding and Norris Engineering Project Number 410-02, dated revised 6-6-2014 with the following conditions as stated on the screen. Second. Motion be made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. 7B, new business, 14 MAS 01, 12 Oaks, phase 8. Again, Laura. That's right. This is phase 8. Dun, 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 dun. Um, this is the main entrance of phase of uh, 12 Oaks. So this, to orient you, this is Green Oaks Parkway. This is an existing uh, curb cut now, and it stubs just to kind of orient you where that's paved to that point. So phase eight is in this area. Um, this is a portion of the Scott property that they were able to acquire earlier this year that came in um, and requested. So that's all part of the PUD, but just to make sure this is made possible by that acquisition that was made uh, earlier uh, last year. So in terms of total, I always like to, to give these 
numbers out to you guys as we're going through the, the 12 oaks just to see where we stand now. So phases one, two, this is one, this is two, 3A is over here, phase seven is back behind here, this is phase six over here, and we just did phase four, which is this area, um, are approved, and then one, two, and six, of course, are under construction. So to date, 973 units have been approved, and the PUD allows for um, just over 2,000, so 2,028. So we've still got a ways to go here. Um, but this is a good thing. They're moving forward. Um, they're opening up new phases, and they have, have builders lined up, so that's a very positive indication of, of how healthy Holly Springs is right now. In terms of the site plan, uh, it consists of 122 single-family lots. So all of this is a single-family detached product. Uh, the minimum lot size is 4,000 square feet, so that's just over a 3.27 uh, density. And along uh, New Hill Road, they're meeting the, the buffer requirement by providing a 30-foot semi-opaque buffer, uh, which will feature a a canopy tree, uh, two small trees, three evergreens, and five shrubs per 1,000 square feet. And they've actually are exceeding um, their expectations of, of what is otherwise would be required with a typical subdivision adjacent to a thoroughfare. Uh, they also are, are uh, will be uh, supplying street trees, which has been shifted to to give thought to, to site distances and, and that sort of thing. And that's something that we'll continue to work through as, as lots come in. Uh, planning board um, saw this as well and didn't, didn't have any issues. They were interested on uh, what, the, what the vision was for this phase and the, Tom's here and can certainly speak to that if, if y'all would like to hear. <coughs> There's one condition that's different than what was uh, the planning board motion. Mm -hmm. so, Have we fixed? Go ahead. And, and that's been addressed at this time. Okay. So it's been removed from the um, slide. So when you're at that point, it no longer is needed. The revised plans were, were good. Just ask. Good question. Yep. That's a very good question. Is there is there 12,000 square foot lots on this plan? This plan is actually, um, they're smaller lots. They're a minimum lot size of 4,000. Right. So they're, as you can see, kind of by the, by the it's hard to tell, I'm sorry, um, by what's faded and what's black. But this is kind of the project area here. Huh. So there's, um, might be some that are close kind of in the back here that probably exceed 12,000, but the minimum lot size is 4,000. Okay. All right. I guess they're going to be they're deep lots, right? Um, mm-hmm. That they are the. I'll let Tom kind of get up and talk about. I think it's. Go on, he'll Tom. talk about it's. It's very um, something that Holly Springs needs. So I think it's. Name and address, about. Tom. Bring it up, <coughs> please. Uh, for the minutes, Tom Spalding, the project engineer. We're at 972 Trinity Road in Raleigh. What the the uh, intent on this section is to be an age targeted product. Will it be big? Uh, one-story ranches. So that's why you picked up on the depth of it. Mm -hmm. um, thinner, uh, you know, I think the width on these average a little bit over 60, but, you know, not a lot of area for um, older folks to have to take care of a lot of lawn, but that was, that was that's the intent is age-targeted here, big ranches. Big ranches. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other questions for Tom while he's here? Yeah. Seeing none? Relatively straightforward. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, sir. Any other questions or comments for Laura? Seeing none. Yeah, but we get a lot of calls and inquiries about age targeted and, and what Holly Springs is doing, so I thought that was worth worth noting. Adds to the mix. That's right. I'll make the motion to approve preliminary plan 14-MAS01 for 12 Oaks Phase 8 as submitted by Spalding and Norris Engineering, project number 410-02, dated revised 4-7-2014, with the following conditions as stated on the screen. Second. Motion been made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Laura. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Tom. 
Thank you, John Boy. <laughs> All right, item number eight, other business. Who has other business? I got my one little comment I want to make again. Crosswalks, we're getting better. We're not there yet. I've seen a few people that did not slow up when somebody was crossing, but I do notice a lot of people are doing it better now, and I appreciate that. Um, I have reason to believe recently that the purple route, for those of us who are interested in the I-540, has been, uh, hopefully, it's not going to make it. I say hopefully. This is not an announcement yet. It's just, but I did get word from very high up the food chain at DOT that uh, the orange route is still preferable, so keep your fingers crossed. You'll know more later, and I think that's what's going to happen. So I just wanted to let you know that. Uh, what else? Um, what's the status on what we, our last meeting relative to the um, Parks and Recreation? Are we, what's, we're, how are we yeah. going on that? We, we met today, uh, okay. the uh, Parks and Recreation Director, Town Attorney, and myself, and we discussed uh, the, um, not only the, I guess, the trespass policy, but also the uh, no smoking, no smoking uh, parks policy. I think we've got our heads together, and, and uh, we should be coming to you uh, June 5th, or July 15th at the July next 15th. council meeting with both of those policies. We had mentioned at the last meeting we'd come up and say something today about um, what we talked about last week, so I'm asking to get an update on it. So. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. What else? Um, I, I was the same as Linda, just wondering about that, and then um, information as we progress about the, the new ideas we're coming up with to lengthen the field hours, the open play, things like that. Same thing. Yep. Well, we'll look over whatever. Yeah, that's all yeah, part that's of the same. I wanted to mention so, it. Sure, absolutely. And absolutely. absolutely. Link, lengthening the field hours, that's, that's another issue. <laughs> However, we met on that as well, had a different, a different meet, a different group of individuals. We had some folks from the parks staff there along with our uh, IT staff. We talked I, uh, you know, at the last meeting about possibly positioning some cameras there. Uh, so we're still looking at that, that option. And so I, I do think moving forward, we will be coming, uh, coming up with some ideas that will enable us to expand the hours of usage and at the same time safeguard that facility. And, and the signage, make sure a good look at the signage to make sure it's clear on where, what they need to do uh, if those gates are closed and who they who they ask to open. Signs were pretty forth. clear. Thank you. Yeah, I uh, I sent you all. A, yeah, I did. I went out there one morning sure. after I went okay. to the Hunt Center and I took a photo of both of them and I sent them to everyone and it seemed pretty I clear. Yeah, yeah pretty I think clear. I think we're pretty good on signs. Well, I, I I know what Linda's saying though. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, we are good. It is it is written right there. But I think just knowing people know that we took another look at it. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, just to make sure. Which we did. And um, I think that um, us talking and discussing it will make sure that the community knows. Okay. I received, I've, re I've received probably, oh, I don't know, two dozen texts, emails, mm -hmm. phone calls about it, um, yeah. about I mean, all of it. So these things happen. I mean, you know, it's whenever you're developing a process and a, and a procedure, there may be some kinks in the system, and we'll get it straight back. Okay. Well, I, and with that dwelling on it we it, it's it's a topic in terms of uh, hours of usage for, the, for yeah. the facility it's a topic which we actually discussed at length uh, when we were putting our budget together mm -hmm. um, so it, it's it's not one that that just came up I, I think the trespassing incident has sort of shed light on it but right. it's really mm -hmm. something right. that we had been discussing internally and it's certainly a goal of ours and it's not only limited to uh, Womble Park or the or the soccer fields, but it's also related to uh, Sug Farm as well. You know that's a facility that we want to open for longer periods of time. Uh, you know, as, as everyone's aware, we we only acquired Sug Farm and it was only opened a little over a year ago. And essentially, um, you know, it's it's been utilized just for special events. And we're trying to put a program together where that facility will be uh, open to the public during weekends as well as special events. Uh, we're just trying to prepare it and make it more public accessible and, and suitable for the for the public and similarly with the uh, synthetic turf soccer fields uh, what we're finding is that most communities that have synthetic turf soccer fields they aren't really they aren't really open to the public but ours we feel like from the beginning our vision has always been that we were going to have these facilities and they were going to be made available to the public for their enjoyment not only when we had programmed activities but also when we when we had we didn't have activities going on, and that's still our goal. Well, I think it's because we took away 
a huge, you know, a green area, big park area where people went. And we talked about this at the retreat, and I think that's where the difference is. I know other places, synthetic fields are locked up, you know, unless someone's there all the time. But this is, we took away a big area where people were, and I think that's where they're coming back now. I agree. I mean, and we, that was actually something we discussed, that w this situation is a little different for exactly the reason you stated, because yeah. for years, you know, folks have been accustomed to being, being able to walk out there on that grassy field and, and right. you know, kick right. a ball or whatnot, and, and we don't want that to change. Now, we're going to also look at it relative to the, to the North Main Athletic Complex, because when that goes online, these kind of processes have to be in place for that, too. Yeah, I mean, we will look at it. I mean, I think the difference here is the proximity of those fields to the Hunt Center. It makes it a lot easier, I think, in, you know, down the road once we get, uh, as I said, our web cameras in place to open that facility because we'll have staff there literally across the street. Mm -hmm. North Main will have some staff members there, uh, but it'll be, it'll, you won't have as many, as much of a staff present at that location, certainly not at the beginning as you do at Womble eventually get cameras there and all. And that's a good point yeah. that you brought we, 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 that we lost a lot of play space there. Yeah, well, in talking about the signage, could, I mean, could we put, I know we talked about this, something on the fence that said, you know, or something that points to the pit? Because I know a lot of people don't, may not know that that's actually available to go down and kick around and throw a Frisbee or whatever. Maybe we look into something, adding another sign. Or oh, you, play, you play soccer there too. Huh? You, you can play, play soccer, soccer too. Sure. You, can, yeah. you can do all the things you used to be able to do on the old field. Yeah, exactly. So and I don't think people remember that when they're out Bye. there. Well, we'll talk about that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anything else? Thank you. Anything else? Item number nine, manager's report. You're half done already, right? Yeah, I mean, the only thing, of course, we got our uh, Independence Day celebration. It's this yeah. Saturday, July the 5th, from 5 o'clock until, I believe, 9.30. Right. And um, I know the uh, Parks and Rec staff and the uh, certainly the Police department have worked together to. I know last year it was a great event, but I think there was some traffic congestion issues, and the guys have, have worked hard to, uh, to to make that that flow a little little better this year. So I, I mean, I'm, I think they're all excited about how that's going to work out. We're not saying if you go if you go out there, you won't get in the traffic <laughs> line, but it, I think you'll, things will be moving It'll be better. moving even better. Be better. And with that said, the crowds were great last year, and people seem to be very understanding and very patient with yeah. us. It was, a, you know, it was a new facility, and it was the first time we'd had an event of that nature. Worked quite well. Yeah. How many Thank vendors you. are we going to have? Eight vendors. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, I think we have uh, about uh, twelve or fourteen. Okay. okay. And we, it, I do wanted to point out that the event, the park opens at five for that event, but there will be music there mm -hmm. well in advance of the the actual fireworks, which I, I think start at dusk around. You know, between nine and nine thirty, nine fifteen, yeah. And um, farmers market is open on Saturday, I believe. So, I'm good. And I'm happy to say that the Civitan Group will be running, if you will, the bag toss, as I call it. Uh, we'll have a nice little competition there. Okay. Prizes: Lamborghinis, Ferraris. <laughs> Where's this at? <laughs> It'll be there. At the farm at Sug Farm. Sack farm. Sack farm. Like farm. Ferrari when I came in driving down Ballantyne. Anything else? Oh, Ferrari. No, sir. That's it. That's it. Okay. Counselor. Um, yes, I would like to update uh, you all and get some guidance on a economic development agreement uh, relating to some downtown development um, regarding the um, land swap agreement that's right. currently in place but expired with the, the uh, Mosaic I Main property. So pursuant to 143.318.11a. <laughs> Four. Four. <laughs> Four eight. Like a motion. Move to go into closed session based on that general statute. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you all. Short but sweet. <laughs>